don't do that. Don't do that in any movie ever, dudes. If you are like an aspiring writer or whatever, please, as a movie goer, as a movie lover, don't put, don't do that shit in your movies. What is up dudes, it's Jeremy and Dex, and uh, we're here to talk about God Particle, the Cloverfield Paradox, um, which just had like a surprise release last night. I have so many things to say about it. It's been a while since I've done a dedicated movie review, but I was so excited about Cloverfield Paradox. I had to, had to, had to, had to. So I wanna break this up uh, in a few different ways, okay? So first, I just want, I'm gonna dive straight into the, like the last two minutes of movie and talk about the ending of this movie. Then I wanna talk about all of the things going on behind the scenes because that really affected what I thought of this movie and then I'll dive into what I actually thought, how I would have rewritten the movie. Um, that's the easiest way for me to review this movie because the first thing, actually the very first thing, is the yes, no, maybe. Would I watch this movie? Would I, would I buy this movie? It's a yes, but. There are a lot of buts about this movie. No dudes, not those kinds of buts. You dirty birds. Anyways, let's talk about the last two minutes of this movie, okay? Now, I loved how it ended mostly. This is a yes, but. Um, I liked that they come down, and as they come down, um, he gets the phone call, and he's basically like, you know, confused that they're sending him back down when he says these things are here. You didn't have time to tell him about what's going on on Earth. Blah blah blah. I liked that. I liked that a lot. But I did not like that our Cloverfield One monster, our Slusho, um, pops out and does like one final roar, and that's like how the movie ends. Um, why didn't I like that? We're gonna talk about that a lot later. But um, the short of it is. I didn't like how things were written to tie together um, all together. I did not like that. And so with, with the Slush Show specifically, I didn't, you know, with our Cloverfield One monster, I didn't like his return. Uh, also, I, I, I didn't like his return because it was so, it was very rare that you got a good glimpse of him in the first Cloverfield movie. And this is like literally in, perfect lighting like in the middle of the day and he pops out and you get a very good glimpse of him which is cool but um not for this movie i didn't want that there at all what i would have liked how i would have rewritten that 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 just that last 60 seconds of the movie um is i, I would have had the same phone conversation take place and, and just leave a little more mystery. Like maybe they hear some type of sound, maybe they hear some type of roaring, but maybe it's different from the Cloverfield one monster. Just like, just leave that mystery there. And, and that's, we're gonna talk about that a lot later too, because that's my biggest problem. And maybe even my only problem with this movie is that there wasn't enough mystery. Um, and it, it like boggles my goggles that I have to say more mystery about a Cloverfield movie because we're talking about a series that started with like the most ambiguous and mysterious uh, marketing campaign for a movie I've ever seen when Cloverfield 1 released like it was without a doubt it was like the most memorable uh, build up to a movie that I've ever experienced and and literally like will never be able to be replicated like there will not be a movie that will ever be able to copy what Cloverfield did with the marketing for the first movie um, so it's it, it feels weird very weird to me to say like more mystery in a Cloverfield movie because the first two have like had really um, like they've they've done really well for themselves on their own with the mystery. Dax just let out a groan. He feels the same way. So, yeah, that, that's my thought on like the, just those last, you know, 60 seconds or whatever. Um, I liked it. I just, just like a little minor tweak. And again, I'll be saying that a lot because little minor tweaks would have done so much for this movie. Um, so let's rewind. Let's talk about some behind the scenes stuff, okay? Because, like I said, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of layers to Cloverfield Paradox. Um, a lot of things going on behind the scenes that really affected what I thought of this movie. More than, um, more than anything I've seen recently. More than anything I've seen in the last few months, at least. 
So Cloverfield, uh, Cloverfield Paradox, first of all, was originally titled God Particle. Before I say anything else, I'm still going to call this movie God Particle because I wish it was still called God Particle. I did not like the title Cloverfield Paradox. I did not like the, the name of the ship. I did not like Cloverfield being used in the movie the way that it was. Um, but anyways, God Particle gets this surprise Super Bowl release, which is awesome. I loved how they did that. I, I was like, first of all, it was already an exciting game. And then they just dropped this trailer that says it's streaming after the movie. And I was like jumping up and down more than the game. I didn't care about Eagles, didn't care about Patriots. But when I saw that ad, my my beats per minute went to over 200, dudes. Um, I was so excited. I loved how they did that. I was, I was excited to hear when this movie was picked up by Netflix because things were starting to look a little rocky. Things were starting to look a little weird before that. Um, I'm still very excited that Netflix has the Cloverfield uh, name in series because I think that we're going to see a lot more Cloverfield movies and quicker, a little bit quicker, which Clover, 10 Cloverfield Lane wasn't actually released that long ago. But um, I think we're just gonna get, continue to see more. I think we're gonna see this anthology really like double in size in a really short amount of time. So I like that, I think that's very cool. I also am glad that Netflix picked it up because there's definitely an alternate reality where this movie was like almost made, but not finished and never finished because it kept getting delayed and delayed it. I, I think it got delayed like almost a year. Like it, it got delayed several times. Um, I don't know what the, what the nature of that was or whatever, but my point is just that I'm glad Netflix got it and I'm glad that it released and that we finally got to see this movie, that it got to see the light of day at all. Now, the movie itself. And, and honestly, I don't have a lot to say about specifics about the movie okay as far as pacing goes i thought it was paced well as far as acting goes i thought all of the actors did a great job i, re I honestly don't think anyone really stood out from anyone else although um we see a lot of actors that don't get as much screen time and and i still think that holds true that nobody st stood out uh more than anyone else so i think the actors that we had less time with um may have done a better job but simply we didn't have the same amount of time with them. My, my point is that the acting was great. The story, I loved the story, except for a few minor details that I'm gonna get into in a second, but it was all minor stuff. Um, overall, I liked the story, the God Particle story. It was kind of, it, it was not what I expected initially, um, but I loved like just when, when shit hits the fan, I loved it. I loved it and I, I thought it was done like in a very intense and, and uh, true to Cloverfield way The worms dudes the fucking worms that um, That was my favorite scene of the entire movie whenever uh, the worms are missing and it's only a few minutes later It's not left uh, You know for very long <laughs> when that dude throws up all of those worms This is gnarly. Let's talk about what I would have changed um because that's that's all I can think when I when I talk about wanting to review this movie. That's all I can think about is what it would have changed. Okay, so there's a few minor details that would have made this movie from something that I liked to something that I loved. So, the first one being okay, the first one being uh, the guy towards the beginning of the movie who's talking to the news reporter and he's talking about the Cloverfield paradox and how all these things um, we're gonna get all these alternate realities with demons and monsters do one of two things cut that fucking guy's part from the movie or don't make it don't have him specifically mention alternate dimensions with monsters and demons that is what i did not like about that guy's part at all is that he was it was so blatant he basically just said this is what the cloverfield series is don't do that don't do that in any movie ever dudes if you are like an aspiring writer or whatever please as a movie goer as a movie lover don't put don't do that shit in your movies don't put it in the audience's face okay 
because we know what the Cloverfield series is. You don't have to tell us that. And if this movie had been an origin movie, I would have been fine with that if it wasn't so blatant about it. If I, if I finished watching this movie and I was like, oh my God, I think we just saw like the start to every, everything Cloverfield. That would have been cool, but not 15 minutes in am I saying, all right, well, this is the Cloverfield story. This is the start of everything. Glad I know that now. Um, slash, slash, sarcasm. That's really like everything that I would have changed would have done that. I would have cut Cloverfield from anything about the, any, any of the names. Like, I don't like that they say Cloverfield in the movie several times. Um, I don't like, well, I, I guess I talked about the end. I don't like, um, the, the whole story was just kind of like shoehorned into this, making three movies, you know, Cloverfield, 10 Cloverfield Lane, and then this Cloverfield Paradox, making them one narrative. Um, I like I, I like the idea of our third movie being an origin um, to all of these things. I just wish that it, like I said, it wasn't so blatantly obvious. I just wish there had been more mystery to it so that we had these, these three movies that may be tied together, but didn't have to be one narrative. Um, my, my, one of my favorite TV series is American Horror Story, and I love that it's an anthology and there are a lot of connections, but there hasn't ever been a, a season or a storyline that said, hey, this is how everything ties together. And I, and I love that, and I, lo I, I love the mystery of that, you know what I mean? And it, I think that, that makes an anthology like really great is that it's an anthology and um so you know with cloverfield paradox they didn't ruin anything they didn't ruin any of the other movies for me but uh and and, and I, I keep saying this a lot i don't think they went overboard but this is what's sticking out to me as a big cloverfield fan like that's just what's sticking out to me is all of the cloverfield references and making this one big narrative so those are my gripes i feel very uh i feel very satisfied now i got to talk about everything that i did and didn't like about this movie overall all gripes aside i did really like it and i'm very excited for the future of cloverfield um man i love like i'm about to watch it again honestly because i just love i think it's like 35 minutes in or so when shit just starts like really popping off and i loved that I loved how it started off with like uh, Jensen's character, like with just like these screaming coming out of the walls. And you're like, what in the fuck is going on? Um, the worms, like I said, was my favorite part. There's a lot of things to love about this movie, dudes. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Discord, whatever, whatever. Hit me up on Twitter, at Dude, it's Jeremy. Hats off to the Eagles. Hats off to you, dudes. We'll see you in the next one.